All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar on the AGU 2021 fall meeting. Um, my name is Alyssa Stansfield. I'm going to be presenting the first part of this presentation, and Melissa Breeden is going to uh, present the second part. We're both from the, the Early Career Committee. I'm just going to give this a couple more minutes because I see people are still kind of coming in. So I'm just going to wait another minute or two until we start. All right, <clears throat> I think it's a couple minutes past six, so we can get started. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa Stansfield. I'm a, a member of the AGU Atmospheric Science Section Early Career Committee. Um, today, I'm going to be presenting the first half of this webinar about AGU 2021, the fall meeting, a guide for early career scientists. And another member of the Early Career Committee, Melissa Breeden, is going to present the second half. And so before we get started, I just want to mention um, that if anyone has any questions about anything we present today or anything and anything, any questions about the fall meeting, um, please put them in the questions uh, tab. And if we can answer those questions today, we will. Um, if we do not have the answers to the, your questions today, uh, we're going to compile a list of the questions and we're going to send out the answers uh, when we do have the answers, probably in a couple weeks. So, like I said, feel free to put questions in the questions tab. We'll do all the, our best to answer them. Um, and if we don't have the answers, we'll get them to you eventually. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So an overview of AGU 2021 fall meeting. So it is in New Orleans, Louisiana at the Ernest and Morial Convention Center. Uh, the convention center is about a 20 minute drive from the nearest airport, uh, which is Louis Armstrong International, New Orleans. Um, the dates for the meeting are December 13th through 17th. Um, however, there are usually some scientific workshops and networking events that happen the weekend before. So this year, that would be December 11th and 12th. Um, the format, um, because of COVID, is, is hybrid. So there's going to be both in-person and virtual parts of uh, AGU 2021. And in a couple of slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between the virtual and in-person experiences. Um, but before that, just quickly, I'm going to go over some deadlines. Um, so if you are presenting either a poster, e-lightning, or oral presentation, um, you have to confirm your participation in the Outstanding Student Presentation Awards, or OSPA. Um, if you want to uh, participate, you have to confirm by October 29th. 
Um, the early bird registration deadline uh, for AGU 2021 is November 3rd. Um, after that, the registration rates go up, so I recommend registering before that. Um, the deadline for booking housing through AGU is November 17th. And you have to confirm if your presentation will take place in person or online by November 19th. Okay, so what are the types of sessions that happen at the AGU fall meeting? Um, so the kind of main, uh, main scientific sessions, we'll say, um, are the oral sessions, which are kind of traditional, um, you know, someone stands up and gives a, an oral presentation with some slides um, versus an e-lightning, which is, is kind of a mix between a poster and an oral presentation. Uh, so the presenters, uh, they have a poster, they get up, they do like a short presentation about their poster, and then they would go and stand in front of their um, virtual poster um, in the conference center. Um, and people would go up to them and explain the poster. And then a regular poster session that would happen in the big poster hall. There's posters lined up. Everyone stands in front of their poster at a certain time and you, you know, present your poster. Um, there's also what are called town halls, which are kind of like a panel or roundtable discussions on specific topics. Uh, there's keynotes and plenaries, which are like big overarching lectures given by like leaders in the field. And then there's also named lectures, which are lectures awarded to distinguished scientists by the AGU sections. Um, but the most important uh, sections probably for, for you guys would be the oral, the e-lightning, and the posters, because if you're presenting, you're probably doing one of those. Uh, so I'm going to go over kind of the experience um, virtually versus in person if you're doing one of those presentations. But first, um, just a quick look at what the daily schedule looks like. Um, so basically the the schedule, and this, this is all in uh, New Orleans time. Um, this is gonna be the local time. So everything kicks off at 8 a.m. every day. Um, there's oral discussion sessions and e-lightning sessions all you know at the same time. They're both 75 minutes long. Those happen in the morning, there's a 30 minute break, another uh, session of oral presentations and e-lightning presentations, another break. Um, then in the, kind of in the middle of the day, there's a 60 minute break for lunch or town halls and plenaries also happen at this time. Um, then stuff gets started back again at around 1245. There's more oral and e-lightning sessions, another break another set of oral e-lightning sessions. Um, then later there's there's more e-lightning sessions. Sometimes the keynote presentations happen at this time. There's some other types of sessions. Um, and then every day there's a, between 1600 and 1800 uh, local time. There's a two hour poster hall session. So this is when people are gonna be presenting their posters. It's gonna happen for the, you know, the same two hour block every day. This is a little different than what's been happening in the previous years at AGU. Um, but yeah, all the posters are at the same time um, every day for two hours. And then there can also be town halls uh, after those poster sessions at night. Okay, so um, what is the in-person versus virtual experience for oral sessions? Um, so some oral sessions will be a mix of in-person and virtual presentations. Um, so there'll be people both presenting in person and some people will be on the screen presenting virtually. Um, both in-person and virtual attendees can ask questions. Um, some, session, some oral sessions are virtual only. Um, so they, they won't be shown in the convention center. You would have to like log on to the virtual platform in order to watch these virtual only oral sessions. Um, and so the way that oral sessions are gonna work is kind of similar to last year. Um, so there's gonna, the oral presentate, oral presenters have to create a 15 minute pre-recorded presentation, uh, which will be available for attendees to watch from the start of the meeting through February. 
and then during the actual live sessions during the week of AGU, there will during the oral sessions there will be five minute overview presentations uh, followed by moderated discussions, and those discussions will also be recorded, um, and you'll be able to watch them after the fact. Okay, what about e lightning sessions? Um, so e-lightning sessions, they're only happening totally in person or totally virtually. So there's no hybrid e-lightning sessions where some people are in person, some are virtual. Um, but either way, both in-person and virtual sessions start with a three-minute lightning presentation by each presenter. Um, and then if you're in person, following uh, that those three-minute lightning presentations, each presenter will go to... Uh, their poster in the e-lightning theater stay in front of it and there's time for discussion with the people that are there um, and so the in-person e-lightning sessions will not be recorded um, if it's a virtual e-lightning session um, the remaining time is going to be used for group discussion um, and then after that group discussion time uh, the virtual presenters are requested to make themselves available for one hour after the live online session for direct chat with attendees. Um, so I think that's going to happen using Zoom. You'll have like a Zoom room and people co can go in, in and out of the Zoom rooms, Zoom rooms, from what I understand. Um, the online only e-lightning sessions, again, will use Zoom um, and you can use it either through the app or the browser version. and the presentations will be recorded for on-demand viewing. So again, the virtual e-lightning will be recorded, the in-person will not be. Okay, um, posters. So as I kind of explained uh, in this couple slides ago, there's a dedicated daily time for posters. It's 1600 to 1800 Central Standard Time um, every day. And so, Virtual posters will be available for everyone to view uh, from the start of the meeting um, till February. And so even if you are only doing a virtual poster, the vir your poster will still be assigned a poster board within the poster hall. And there'll just be like a sign on that poster board that encourages, it will probably have like the title of your poster and it will encourage in-person attendees to go visit the virtual posters. And then if you're an in-person poster presenter, you're also asked to create a virtual poster and that will be on the online platform as well. So all posters will have like a virtual version. Um, so if in the poster sessions, there's both virtual and in-person presenters, the session chairs can opt to schedule a separate online poster summary session um, anytime during the meeting where I guess it would be kind of like e-lightning, everyone would get a chance to like talk about their poster and then you'd have separate time for discussion. Again, this is optional. Um, I assume that if this is going to happen in your uh, poster presentation block, uh, your session chair is gonna contact you um, and they'll decide on a time. Um, and if all of the posters in your poster session are virtual, then it's kind of it seems like it's kind of going to be like an e-lightning session almost like so you'll have a session where quick presentation there will be quick presentations about um everyone's poster we provide an overview followed by a group discussion with the online audience and then uh again you use those zoom rooms everyone have a zoom room and and people will be able to go in and out and have one-on-one -on -one discussions about their posters um and the again the virtual only sessions will be recorded um obviously the um the in-person will not be okay great and now i'm going to hand it over to uh, melissa to do the rest of the presentation yeah all right thanks Alyssa. um checking you can hear me hopefully yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, sorry, just checking. Um, getting paranoid. Uh, yeah, so just a bit more details about this year's fall meeting in particular. Um, and this is it's always hard to find the right time to give a webinar like this because the fall meeting people are always sort of developing their plans up until uh, the fall meeting occurs. Uh, so right now, the COVID-19 guidelines that we know for sure are that everyone has to be vaccinated uh, to attend in person, and they're still working on how to verify your proof of vaccination um, while maintaining some, some amount of privacy. So uh, stay tuned on how you'll be showing that evidence if you're going in person. Um, that's kind of all we have right now, although I did find uh, an article that said that 91% of all of the people that work in the convention center in New Orleans are vaccinated as well. So that's something else that people have been wondering about. Um, so that was some good news there. And um, pretty much that's all we know so far. So we just have the link uh, to the, the COVID-19 protocol page that's going to be updated as we move closer to the, um, to the workshop, I'm assuming. Um, so next slide, please, Alyssa. There we go. Um, and so just a few other uh, bits of support um, that EGU offers uh, for people attending the fall meeting. And these are geared obviously towards every year, which is in person, but um, all of these things are, uh, or not the travel, but the first two are available for virtual or in-person attendees. So one of them is this program, Safe AGU. Uh, this is a program to support people who um, unfortunately could experience some sort of unsafe or uh, inappropriate behavior or harassment. Um, there are people that walk around with buttons that say Safe AGU on them. Um, I've seen them actually walking around myself, so they are you know, fairly, fairly um, kind of around and in good quantities there. And um, this also goes all the way up to providing some sort of legal guidance and support if uh, unfortunately that would ever be needed. So um, that is something to keep an eye out, Safe AGU, if you're wondering what that is. Uh, childcare is another big concern. Typically, AGU has on site childcare called Camp AGU. This year, that's not going to be offered all just due to COVID, unfortunately. Uh, but there is a way for caregivers who are coming um, for childcare to uh, register and attend for free. Uh, I guess there's a way to, to verify that. Um, and if you by chance uh, can fall into the biogeosciences section, um, then there is still a chance to apply for some caregiving support there. Um, you have one more day, it's due tomorrow, uh, but we do have the link there if that happens to apply to you. Um, so typically there are, you know, more, there's more child care support um, on site than there is this year, unfortunately. Um, and then travel, just to be aware of it, uh, the applications were due in mid-August, but if you're a student, you can apply for travel grants of up to a thousand bucks. And this was new to me um, and also interesting is that I guess there's some arrangement with United Airlines to offer some discounted um, fare for people attending AGU. Although I, I don't know anyone who's personally taken advantage of that, so it's hard to speak to what the options are there, but definitely check it out if that would be helpful. Um, all right, next slide, please. Uh, so a bit of info on uh, events for just early career scientists. Uh, our atmospheric sciences section holds a networking event every Sunday evening. Uh, I think they're still planning, but they will be announcing um, what sort of uh, vendors and private companies and people will be there on um, that event, but usually it's been very successful in the past. And that should be something uh, that's a ticketed event, I believe, as you're registering or on the main registration page. Um, there is a student and early career conference every year. Again, we're, we have lots of caveats for this sort of unusual year, but um, typically it's a one-day workshop that uh, has all sorts of different breakout groups for different types of professional development, like grant writing, also some tools. I saw machine learning for geoscientists was offered a few years ago. So just a whole sort of plethora of different types of professional development topics. Um, this year, it's going to be sprinkled in with the main week of AGU. And again, uh, with our timing being a bit before the actual meeting, um, there's still more information that's forthcoming. We don't have exact events or things like that to, to tell you about right now, but just keep an eye out for that on the schedule. Um, and because the program is quite large. And so uh, doing a thorough sort of scouring of, of the program is really going to help you find 
uh, some of these uh, different type events that aren't such section specific. Um, and then our committee, the Early Career Committee, uh, we're going to have some informal lunch meetings sprinkled throughout the conference, TBD on the times and dates, but we're just thinking, um, bring your lunch, or maybe we can try and grab food nearby. Um, but just to have a meeting for if you're sort of overwhelmed and on your own during lunchtime, you can come say hey to us and um, talk about and meet early career scientists. Um, and one other thing I wanted to point out that I did see when I was looking at the schedule is one of these town halls that will be on Wednesday. And um, it's going to be about safety and belonging in the field and on vessels, which is kind of specific, um, but it's all about field work and uh, keeping people safe and supported on field campaigns. And so this just might be of interest to any early career scientists. We've, as a committee, we've um, held a webinar just talking about um, different ways to keep campaign field campaigns safe because it does kind of turn out that early career scientists um, sometimes bear the brunt of unfortunate situations on field campaigns. Um, so anyways, that, that's just sort of one kind of um, flavor of all the different types of things that AGU offers here. So the people attending this panel are all from NSF and it, these town halls are really meant to be interactive. Uh, they want feedback from people as much as possible. So even attending just to listen um, is a really unique kind of opportunity that only something like the AGU fall meeting really provides. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. This is a lot of like things coming soon, um, but that's that's just all we've got so far. There are some really great resources that will be coming your way with more details soon. Um, so next slide, please. There it is. Um, this is just a kind of more logistical uh, taking care of yourself type advice um, for first time attendees. Even if you've attended other conferences before, a small workshop or even uh, the American Meteorological Society meeting, um, the, the AGU is just sort of a different beast when it comes to the size, the scope, um, the general scale. So we just wanted to emphasize a few things that um, after several years, we've all sort of experienced ourselves as a group. Um, first things first is wear good shoes. Just looking at the picture of this convention center makes my feet hurt because I didn't do that one year and I paid for it dearly. So definitely prioritize that. Um, and on that note, planning out your schedule well in advance is just really going to help you out a lot. Um, and that might sound obvious, but you know, I, I tend to do like a half a day lead time for other workshops and that seems to work out. But for AGU, there's just too much going on for you to be sitting in a session and kind of quickly glancing at what you want to do next. Um, let alone, it might take you 15 minutes to even traverse the convention center, even if you're right on time. Um, and that's that's not like a solid 15 minutes of walking very briskly. So um, just be aware of that. And that it goes for you know social interactions. If you want to see people from you know past experiences, um, just do some due diligence and try to get that all planned ahead of time as, as best as you can. It'll just um, help those days go by uh, more efficiently because they just fly by. Um, and that said though, uh, make sure to give yourself breaks when you need it and don't, don't bring yourself out too much. That's not gonna be helpful at all. Um, if you're not familiar with big conferences, uh, the exhibit hall is just a really cool part of these conferences. There's um, tons of companies there. AGU has like a massive gemstone exhibit hall, which for an atmospheric scientist, I'm not used to seeing that. Uh, NASA is always giving out free stuff. Lots of people are giving out free stuff. Um, it's just sort of a unique, interesting part of, of the whole fall meeting experience. Um, more on the kind of science networking side, uh, make sure I think, or it's just a good idea to have some sort of elevator pitch to describe your research to whoever you might be running into. Um, at an accessible level. And you know, this is something that I actually practice because distilling all of your research down into two sentences is really, really hard. Um, and on that note, uh, if you don't have business cards, I'd suggest getting them. Uh, there's also a suggestion to um, like write a fact or something sort of memorable on your card to have people remember you better because they might be collecting a whole bunch of them. Um, again, with just taking advantage of what the fall meeting offers that other conferences don't. Um, if you can, attending at least one session that's not in your main subject area can really uh, be a good idea just for um, kind of broadening your understanding of what it means to be uh, part of AGU. 
And um, you never know what sort of methods or techniques that you might come across in those other sessions too. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun to, to sort of switch it up and give your mind maybe a little bit of a break, think about something else. Um, poster sessions, yeah, are, can be a little intimidating uh, to walk into a whole, like a room and just start conversations with people, but they are really effective networking groups. If you can find a friend to go with you or something, if, if you're a little shy or insecure, then by all means, definitely do that. There's um, nothing wrong with that. And um, yeah, it's all just, you know, it all, um, yeah, can be really, really effective, virtual or not. I think we're all uh, sort of buying into uh, the virtual uh, poster session idea and making it work um, for us more maybe than it did last year. And uh, yeah, bringing a water bottle or reusable coffee mug is a great idea. There's tea and coffee all over, but they, they seem to be always running out, be running out of stuff. Um, so anything you can do to kind of help yourself feel as comfortable as possible is really uh, going to help you a lot. It's kind of weird to be talking about like personal comfort here, but um, it's, it's just a really, really big, overwhelming um, meeting if you don't plan accordingly. Um, all right, so next slide, please. Um, yeah, here are just some additional resources. Uh, there's a mentoring program that AGU has, and it's I think it's sort of evolving right now. It's called Mentoring 365, and it's a sort of um, kind of virtual mentoring platform where you can get mentoring support um, just overall in general. And then they also have some specific guidance for the AGU fall meeting. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out there. Uh, there's a general FAQs page that has tons of information. It's grouped by there's like housing and hotels suggestions, um, all sorts of different types of of guidance there. And um, we're not the first people to be thinking about how to help people navigate AGU. So uh, in preparing this presentation, we found these two really helpful um, pieces uh, that have been written about um, just navigating the fall meeting. And I can't remember which one, but one of these has uh, really nice specific information on um, preparing your presentation and your poster presentation and how to make both of those work for you. Um, even even more than yeah you would be already so definitely check those out um, and then I think just, I think one more bit of information on the next slide. Yeah, um, if there are international um, attendees that are planning on traveling to the U.S. for uh, the workshop and um, I'm not sure if if, many, if that's many of you or anything, but just be aware that uh, starting on November 8th, uh, there are going to be lots of uh, restrictions on foreign travel being lifted, um, and it's going to open up uh, entry to the U.S. for about 30 more countries or something like that. Um, this is going to be, I think, for fully vaccinated people only, which if you're attending the workshop, you will be already, um, and then there there might be still some testing you have to do, even if you're vaccinated. Um, we just we just found out about this today and uh, wanted to alert everyone to the fact that on November 8th, the the state policies um, are changing, or like the state department policies are changing. So um, if that applies to you, just make sure that you are paying attention to what tests you might need if you need one um, and getting all of your uh, documents in a row so that you can attend. Um, all right, and next slide. Yeah, so I think that's it for all of our just um, sort of general advice. I see that there are some questions here, so we'll get to those uh, right now. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to advertise that um, our early career committee is looking for new members. Um, we have kind of designated terms of a few years, and so some of us are uh, stepping down. Um, we are particularly interested in having representation from uh, students and from uh, people who are interested in uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, measures. We have a subcommittee that's devoted to that and um, the chair of that will be stepping down. Um, and we are completely open to people who don't fall into those categories as well. Uh, we have about four open positions right now. So um, please uh, send us a CV and just a letter of interest ideas you might have for the committee to our email there 
Um, and those will be due just at the end of the year there. Um, so with that, that's, that's all we've got. And I guess we'll go to some of these questions here. First one I'm seeing. Can you confirm what chatter I've seen on Twitter, which is that masks will not be required in person if NOLA's mask mandate is not active at that time? Yeah, and if so, that's really disappointing. Um, so we, I, if that's something that's being um, talked about, I haven't seen any information that says that masks will be required. So um, I would say that this, this conditional um, thing based on New Orleans' mask mandate might be, might be possible, but um, we haven't heard anything definitive about that, unfortunately. I think we're definitely gonna put that in our top list of things that we would like some clarity on. Um, so unfortunately, I agree with you though, uh, it will be disappointing um, if that is the case. Next one. Oh, can we share the slides? Yes, so uh, we had some plans, I think, to share the slides with uh, everyone who attended, and then we're also gonna put it on our resources page that we have on the atmospheric sciences section. Uh, I have some doubts re regarding the virtual grant. Okay, um, not quite sure what that might have meant. If um, Pubali, if you could, Clarify or something in the in the chat. Maybe I don't think we can unmute you. Not actually sure. Um, maybe that's a problem about virtual um, virtual monetary support. Not yeah, sure. I think there is. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. I think there is some sort of grant for people applying for like attending virtually. Um, for it might just be for students, like like the student travel grant would be. Um, but I think the deadline was the same as the in-person grant. So it was back in August, I believe. Um, so it may, be, it may be too late to apply for any grants um, at this time. I'm not positive about that, but. Yeah, okay. Maybe we can follow up on that. Um, yeah. See if we missed any financial support here. Um, oops, okay. Here's, yeah, all right. Thank you, Christina, for that. Um, Next question, um, are the early career events also going to be hybrid or will they be in person? Ooh, good question. Um, the networking events is all in person, correct, Alyssa? Yeah, so the, our networking event, um, the atmospheric science section networking event is in person. Um, there probably will be other networking events that are virtual, I'm guessing. I just, um, I'm not sure any information is posted about them yet. But that's another thing that maybe we could send out in an email a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, I would like to know that too. So we can, we've got uh, someone else helping us out. Okay, um, oh, okay, how, how the grant will be dispersed for those virtual grants. Uh, so if you get one, how is it going to be um, disseminated? Uh, I am not, <laughs> I am not totally sure. Um, that's, you know, I've, I've gotten support from AGU before and it did come in the form of reimbursement after the fact. And it did take quite a while, but I don't know if that's a standard AGU policy that was for a congressional visits day. Um, could try to get information on that. Um, I would guess if you, were, if you were able to get a grant, they would provide you with hopefully some sort of, um, yeah, way to, to get that money to you quickly. Yeah, I would say if you have one, um, like if you have gotten one, you should, and you're, you have a question about that, maybe try to email someone who's part of the program and they'd probably be able to answer that. But, you know, I've never gotten one, so I'm not sure. And I just want to point out, uh, so Paul Newman, the AS section president, um, said in the chat that, yeah, the Sunday night early career networking event uh, with the atmospheric science leaders in the field is in person and it'll be 6.30 to 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, so that is one networking event that'll be in person, but like I said, there probably will be some that are virtual. Um, I just don't know when they are, but that's something that we could certainly send out an email about. Oh, and masks are required for that in-person event. Oh, okay, good to know. Good, good, good. All right, um, I'm not seeing 
any other questions at the moment, we can maybe. Yeah. No, and I will also wanted to mention that um, this uh, presentation is being recorded and it will also be on the AS section webinars website. Um, so if you know anyone who maybe could benefit from this information, uh, they'll be able to watch this recording and also see the slides. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah, okay, so info about, yeah, the, the format of the early career events. Yeah, that, okay, great. We will, we will make sure to, to figure that out and get back to you all. Um, definitely a good question. Yeah, I would think at least some of the events that the, like the early career conference would put on, they would probably try to do some hybrid events. Um, I don't have any information about it, but I, I'm sure that they want to include both in-person and virtual attendees. Yeah, yeah, I would think so too. Um, and also just on top of these specific events that we sort of highlighted, um, just searching, you know, early career and whatever else you might be interested in, the program returns a ton of specific talks about early career research. So if that's of interest to you, the program is full of information about that. It's just these sort of uh, additive events that seem to get planned uh, closer to the event itself. So, cool. yeah, right. I don't see any more questions. So, yeah, well, um, they've got our email here. If anything else comes up, or um, I think you can find probably both of ours uh, via that internet. So thank you everyone for attending and thank you for the great questions. Um, I hope this was helpful. Please share all this info and we are hoping to get back to you with, with some of these information, this information uh, later on. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks for attending. <laughs>